So we're now going to study momentum. Mm -hmm. As we said before, we looking at, we've looked at all sorts of different things, kinematics, um, all the descriptions, and then we went to dynamics, the laws, the forces. Um, and then of course we went into energy and now momentum. So these are things that are all in some ways related, but they are all different concepts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So energy and momentum are not the same thing and so on. All right. So momentum, firstly, what is it? Well, it's given the letter P to represent. So this represents momentum. And by definition, it is just mass times velocity. In other words, P equals MV. Now, from this then, I think it's quite clear and you can probably see that if mass goes up and velocity is constant, obviously, then momentum goes up. If velocity goes up, then momentum goes up. So basically, all things equal, the heavier, or I guess the more massive an object is, the more its momentum. And the faster it's moving, the more its momentum. Does that make sense? No. Good. Now the thing is though, what does momentum represent? And why are we calculating this thing? Um. What is it? Yeah. And why are we calculating it? Well, not pretty sure. Actually. Well, so the th here's the thing, right? Think about when we did energy and work, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we could have given you all sorts of definitions of what energy and work was, and work was force times displacement and all that kind of thing. But yeah. at the end of the day, why did we calculate that? Now, I know you didn't do, I know you skipped over that chapter a bit. Yes. But the point is, we define it and calculate it because it's useful to us in some way. Yes. All right. So momentum, lots of people think it's like energy. It's like some sort of moving energy. Well, technically that's wrong. Because if you're talking about moving energy, what are you really talking about? Kinetic. Correct. And kinetic energy is half mv squared, which I'll just write it briefly here, which you can also see as m goes up, you know, kinetic goes up. As v goes up, kinetic also goes up, but, you know, to the square. And so kinetic energy and momentum are similar in that they both go up as m and v go up, but kinetic energy is the energy. It is the moving energy, right? Mm -hmm. But momentum is different. And kinetic energy has its uses when you're trying to talk about conservation of energy, right? Yeah. And momentum is useful because there are things that don't follow conservation of energy, but follow, well, conservation of momentum. Mm -hmm. So essentially, when <clears throat> Newton was kind of doing his sort of um, analyses, he found that if we calculated this quantity called momentum, which is mass times velocity, then under certain situation, it would stay constant. And that is the law of conservation of momentum. Which is actually a pretty fundamental law in physics. Now, I can write out the very wordy version, but I know you get the idea, so I'll write it in a fairly short, short sort of way. But the law of conservation of momentum basically means that the momentum before Equals the momentum after. Yeah, equals the momentum after. You can express this as P initial 
equals p final. But the thing is, right, if we are going to say that momentum doesn't change and that the momentum before is equal to the momentum after, then we really need to think about what we're saying. Before or after what? Collusion. Well, that's one option. And explosion. Correct. So in other words, conservation of momentum is extremely useful when you're doing calculations and trying to work out what basically happens with when objects collide. That's probably most of the questions are going to come across, but also when a single object separates into smaller bits. And so, <clears throat> you know, we've had that example where you've been on the boat and the child throws an object out. Um, yep. You can also think of it as, you know, you've got a rocket and part of it separates kind of thing. Um, you can think of it as a plane where it drops a bomb. So the bomb separates from the plane. Um, so, you know, the bomb goes down, the plane goes up. Um, you can think of it as, you know, you've got a person out in space, they throw something one way and they go the other way. Or you can think of it as, you know, the way that, you know, I guess most people interpret the word explosion. You have a bomb, right? An actual bomb. A bomb is one piece, right? Yes. But when it explodes, the pieces don't go in the same direction. They go everywhere because the total sum of the momentum still needs to be zero. Yeah. You can't have all the pieces going to the right because if you've got pieces going to the right, well, that's momentum going to the right. You, you must have something to cancel it up by going to the left. Mm -hmm. So that is the law of conservation of momentum. Okay. And yeah. basically you just need to then work out what momentum is. And then do questions which can get relatively complicated, but it's the law of conservation of momentum, and that's how you answer all of those collision and explosion questions. Okay? Yep. Now we'll do them after. I want to run through all the theory because I know you're, you know, want to make sure that we've covered everything. Yep. And you're clear with all the easy questions. So we could look at the harder ones potentially later if we have time. But mm -hmm. here's the thing, right? We also need to define a few other things. So there's impulse. Do you know what impulse is? Is it like changing momentum? Uh, right. momentum? So one definition of impulse is changing momentum. And so if impulse is defined as changing momentum, how, could we, how do we represent that in symbols? Uh, impulse equals to P over T? No, it's not P over T. That's wrong. Change oh. in momentum. I, I see what you mean. You're thinking of change in momentum over time. That's wrong. We're, we're literally just talking change in momentum. It's literally just the change in momentum. Like so the, P, the P here, I mean momentum. I mean momentum over time. So P is momentum. We're not yeah. talking about the rate of change of momentum. That's a different thing. That would be P over T. We're okay. talking about just the difference, the change in momentum. Oh, and then M1 minus M2. Uh, P2. Oh, so maybe Oh, I see. And, and like M times V minus U. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll get there. So in other words, it's, you know, final minus initial, right? Yeah. Which you can write as delta P. Are you comfortable with delta? Yep. Yeah, so delta just means changing. So, yep. Yeah. And then, as you said, you know, that's also just MV minus MU, right? Yes. D it depends on what we know. But that also means it's m times v minus u, right? Oh. But that's also m times v minus u over t times t, right? Mm -hmm. And what's v minus u over t? Uh, that's x uh, ratio. And what's m in? Um, force, force times time. All of those are equivalent. Yeah. So in other words, Importantly, you probably want to just recognize the key points are that impulse is, if we're focusing on the key ones, it's, it's changing momentum by definition, but it's also force times time. Yep. And so can you see what I mean by 
impulse, which impulse is clearly not, it is clearly momentum, right? Because it's just a change in momentum, right? Yeah. But can you see what I mean by, even though it's not force, it's related to force. Uh -huh. Like momentum is not force. Yeah. But it's related to it. But I'm still confused on what, so what is momentum? Like how would you define it? Like the test well, of... that's the thing, right? We've defined it as literally, well, oh, we went too far. It's literally just mass times velocity. That's what it is. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can always try to give some sort of conceptual idea of what it is, but then anytime you give some sort of try to get some sort of conceptual idea of what it is, you got start talking, you start bringing it closer to kinetic energy and it's clearly not kinetic energy. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you can think of it as some sort of expression to describe how easy or hard it is to stop something. Okay. Or, um, but, but that's, but that's kind of getting, see, that's kind of talking about inertia. So that's not really yeah. entirely right either. So the, the definition is that it's mass times movement, uh, times velocity. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why we calculate it is because it's useful because it stays constant in certain interactions like collisions and explosions. Okay. Yeah. And it can be calculated as well by considering impulse, which is force times time. Yeah. And so as, as I guess I would have been trying to tell you, um, you know, there, there are all these different concepts. Try not to get them confused because they are different to each other. Yeah. And yet they are, um, they are related in the sense that momentum is not, you know, force, but it's force times time, right? Impulse is force times time. Oh. Um, and, you know, momentum is not acceleration, obviously, but it's related to acceleration as we just showed you in velocity and so on. Right. Mm -hmm. So in the earlier sort of the summaries we talked about, I've shown you what the sort of key concepts are. People often get them mixed up. They think that, you know, a force is the same as energy or the work is the same as momentum or, you know, they're not the same, but they are related. Mm -hmm. All right. Understand? Yeah. Good. Well, because impulse is force times time, if you go back to your graphical analysis, right? Just go back to kinematics, right? Yep. In the case of a VT graph, how do I get displacement under, for a VT graph? You, like, you, you times them. <laughs> so, yeah, so for formulas, right? You kind of multiply them, is the general idea. I mean, obviously, you actually have your full version here, right? But yeah. in general, it was the average velocity times time, right? So the general idea was you multiply velocity by time at a very sort of not specific level. If velocity was averaged, it's velocity times time, right? Yes. But graphically, what, how did you get it? Um, I think it's the, 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 the area under the line. Right. So the area under the curve is displacement, right? Yeah. So what that really means then is that this here, this area would represent displacement, right? Uh -huh. Which means that this displacement, but displacement is basically V times T, right? That's the gist, the gist of the idea, right? Yes. And acceleration is, you know, V divided by T while we're at it, right? Yes. But the general idea. All right, so keeping that in mind, all right, so keep that in mind. Now, keep also in mind that we've got impulse. Is force times time, right? So if I have a FT graph, whatever the force times time, whatever the graph is, right? How do you think I get impulse from the graph? What's still the area under the exactly. So it's the area under 
an FT graph. Because graphically, it's the same concept, right? Um, yeah. Its area essentially represents the area, uh, it essentially represents the, if you multiply the two together, um, when they're not constant. Um, you haven't done calculus yet at this point, right? Uh -huh. All right, so we'll leave it there. I mean, if we're bringing calculus concepts, it's, there's something more formal that we can use to describe it. But essentially, conceptually, if you're taking the vertical and dividing it by the horizontal and calculating the gradient, then that's essentially, um, you know, acceleration in the case of a VT graph. If I want to work out what force divided by time was, then I will take the gradient. But if I want to take the multiplication, so velocity times time is the displacement, so therefore area is displacement. Since impulse is force times time, then impulse is area under the FT graph. Yeah. Good. All right, so that's essentially impulse, and you can see how we used that in an earlier question. Really, the only other thing that we kind of really need to say about this chapter, before I guess really it just comes down to question, is the fact that collisions are split into different types. Do you know how collisions are split? Did how to uh, split the different types of collision? Uh you mean those inelastic and elastic? Correct. So remember, as long as it's a collision, then it obeys law of conservation of momentum. So at this point, we know that momentum before equals momentum after. Okay. We know that. Mm -hmm. It's a collision, so we know that. But there are still two other types of collisions. And as you mentioned, we have what's called elastic. And inelastic collision. Do you understand what an elastic collision is? Yes. What's an elastic collision? When the uh, when the energy is constant, yeah. So when, when the thing is conserved, block. Yeah. K is conserved. Right. So what does that mean when K is conserved? What's you know what's another way of saying that? Um, so like like before the collide, like. The kinetic energy is the same as in after the collision. Yeah, so the kinetic energy before, and we'll, you know, when we say kinetic energy, we really mean the total sum of the kinetic energy before mm -hmm. is equal to kinetic energy after. Mm -hmm. And this one is K is not conserved. In other words, you lose energy to you know sound and light and heat and deformation and things like that. Right? Mm -hmm. So Therefore, and, and you don't get it back is what we're saying. Um, whereas an elastic collision is, is that, right. So that basically is all the theory side of things of this chapter. We've defined what momentum is. We've related it to impulse plus all its various factors and graphical. And then, you know, we've now talked about the different types of collision and the definition of clear. If it's a collision or an explosion, it follows law of conservation of momentum. If you have a collision, there are two different types. Um, you've got elastic and inelastic. If it's elastic, K is conserved. If it's inelastic, K is not conserved. And that is the theory. Mm -hmm. Everything from here on is, I guess, doing more questions to make sure you understand how to use these things. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at some questions.